Hey everyone, and it's time to take a look at the Zenith 2 Extreme. So it's the new TRX40 socket. What you do need to know straight from the get-go is all TRX40 boards are not backwardly compatible with the older Threadripper processors. You can only use third generation processors in the new TRX40 boards. So with that out of the way, So if you are interested in the board itself, I have done a full preview on everything that's in the box and all the little niggly bits as well. And that is already live on the channel and on the website. But I'll give you a skim around the actual board today. And first and foremost, we need to talk about the cooling in the PWMs really. Now the PWMs, there are 16 uh, uh, power phases on this board, but they are parallel wired into uh, a an, uh, an, uh, controller which only controls eight. There are no doublers. Uh, so you have the eight phase PWMs, uh, PWM controller, and then that is parallel wired out into 16 Infineon 70 amp phases. I've said these numbers far too many times today. I shouldn't have done too many videos in a day. Anyway, so uh, it's only an eight times controller, but then you have 16 phases, so they're parallel wired into those. Uh, Asus is, uh, does have two fans hidden underneath that little um, grill as well, and they are 50 millimeter fans hidden underneath that, although they only kick in at 60 degrees, uh, but you can change the uh, fan curve when they kick in, turn them off completely, in the software and also in the BIOS as well. Uh, so it's completely, you know, customizable so that they don't have to be noisy. One of the things I will say though, is that just remember I said 60 degrees is when they kick in. And then when we get to the VRM temps, oh, actually let's just bring the VRM temps up now. So as you can see with the VRM temperature graph, it actually does incredibly well. Now at first glance, if I hadn't told you about the fans, you may have thought that the reason why they are so low is because those fans are spinning. But as I've said to you, they don't really kick in until 60 degrees anyway. So uh, it just goes to show that even though they are parallel wired and all of that sort of stuff, which on paper looks like it's going to perform worse than the MSI and the Gigabyte, it actually, you know, the, the temperatures just transform really, really well and it's uh, actually quite a positive thing. Uh, and that's quite surprising when also the other thing is, is the Asus is pretty much the only one that doesn't have the micro fine heat sinks completely covering both the top and the side of the board. They ha do have a relatively kind of standard looking heat sink from the outside being a large chunk of aluminium. And normally at this point, I would have a gigabyte rep in my ear roll saying, ah, but Asus don't have the uh, temperature probe actually on the PWMs like we do, or on the power phase, whatever you want to call it, um, on the MOSFET body, we'll say. Um, but because they're all using the same one, they all take the temperature reading from the same place. So we may dig into that more as time progresses, but where we're in, in kind of a bit of a rush for NDA, it, it looks pretty damn good from the, uh, the initial batch, batch of testing. Now you can see that there is two eight pin CPU powers in the top right hand corner of the board. These are also both metal shielded from the uh, outsides there, but they are solid pins as well. Unlike the other boards though, the 24 pin is not solid pins. And you can see that there are two solid pins and the rest are the hollow folded pins uh, that you would get normally. And that makes it stand out slightly differently from the other boards as well. You can see you've got some uh, voltage monitoring points there. And then we'll, you can see just at the top up here. So you can see that we've got a couple of um, RG bargy RGB headers and then there are two fan headers at the top these are your two CPU headers and then when we come further down here you can see that there's another fan header just here and then when we get further down we go past the SATA we go past and we go down into the water cooling section you can see that we've got another header here which you can use for a water pump as well 
This is your water pump RPM. And this is your water cooling zone as well. Down in the bottom corner, there are a lot of connections. Don't forget, I am just skimming around this, but you can go for a full in-depth look on the website. You can also see with this one, compared to the preview that I did, I have pulled the sticker off finally. There's a fingerprint there on the uh, heat sink and you can see that there is a little fan down here. Now, while we are down in this section, there are two NVMe um, uh, connections underneath that heat sink there and you can get a further two in the DIM2 connector up the top, which is basically like an add-in, it's kind of like, a, it looks like a memory module really, but it's got two uh, NVMe's on it. But then also there is a fifth, weirdly, around the back of the board and normally they reserve that for like ITX and stuff so it's kind of interesting for them to have done that with a, a large EATX board like this. You can also see the rear back plate and bracing going on there as well. This board does weigh a lot. So spinning it back round we'll come round to the uh, back and then you can see your Wi-Fi 6 you can see a USB 3, you can see a USB 3.2 Gen 2, your Type C. You can also see your BIOS flashback header here, which relates into this. Also your clear CMOS. 10 GBE Ethernet here and your normal gigabit Ethernet here. And then your uh, audio outputs there, which are gold plated. And they also light up as well, so that um, you don't necessarily have to look for the color. They actually light up from the inside so you know which one is which. Now, when it comes to the bulk of the performance, you do need to remember that you can go to the OC3D website where you can see this board, the other boards, the CPUs as well. And we go into a great deal more depth there. We kind of pick out the highlights for the video to try and keep it down, because let's face facts, if you're a regular, you know that I talk a lot. So if I actually talk, spoke about every single one of the graphs, we'd be back to 45 minute videos for a USB drive. Um, so with the uh, ROG Extreme itself, um, one thing that I will say is on paper, because of the VRMs, it was literally out of the MSI, the Gigabyte, and this one, it did read like it was slightly going to be down because it was parallel wired, and the other two had proper 16 phase controllers. This one didn't, and that was really the only thing that you could pick them apart greatly. But one of the things that has gone into Asus's uh, favor is at least for the 3960X, because that's the only one that I've been able to test so far, that they didn't really use a lot of power. And even based, you know, looking at the uh, 2950X and the 2970X, it was using a lot less power than they were. Now, I am hoping to get the 3970X in to properly pummel this board, but I don't foresee it being a, uh, an issue for it. And the, the scores really were very close between the uh, ROG and the Aorus. And sometimes the ROG was at the top of the graph, sometimes the Aorus was at the top of the graph. The Aorus did seem to just kind of pip it when it came to very, very hardcore rendering. Uh, but one of the things I would say with the, the ROG board is the BIOS is easier and probably, easier to kind of get your head around but at the same time it's just one of those things with the Asus is that the BIOS does seem to be that little bit better um, so you kind of what you lose with one board you gain in another kind of place so it, they are actually very very evenly matched across the board now that's both a good thing for uh, the end user but also it can make things a little bit grey as well and it is going to come down, I think, to, in reality, uh, just kind of brand allegiance more than anything else, because it does get the job done. It does get the job done very well. Uh, and the build quality has always been incredibly high. The one thing I will say, though, is with the whole parallel wired thing, like I said, didn't particularly, hasn't made a difference to the results. And maybe that's, you know, their strength there. But it does feel like that maybe the other two have tried harder electrically than ROG may have done and that really kind of then that would normally have been the place that ROG would have excelled and they are normally the the uh, industry leaders with new tech and you know pushing boundaries and wanting their boards to be the absolute best that they can be and this kind of does feel like it 
gets the job done and gets the job done well rather than being an absolute kind of balls to the wall we've made it the best that we can do makes you kind of wonder whether you might get the zenith too extreme alpha in a few months time and then it'll have a 16 phase controller on it and they'll do more of this and more of that and i don't know it's, it's a bit of a weird one it's at that point you're reviewing more than just the data you're actually picking it apart and looking at a brand's history and you know the way they would have done things in the past more uh, and that's why with this one it does feel like they, they've maybe not made as much effort with it as they may or they would have done in the past and i don't know maybe that's just me just picking up on it the little um uh, lcd up in the top corner is now color that does look nice like I've said to you, with all the graphs that you've seen appearing on the board, it does perform very well and it just trades places really with the Aorus throughout. Um, so, did really well uh, performance wise. Um, I would, I personally think that the aesthetics on this are maybe not as full blown and kind of flashy as maybe like the Rampages have been in the past or maybe even when you look at the extreme alpha maybe so it's it's i think they've toned it down and it's more that i'm shocked that there's less rgb on it than i was expecting but the mirror side of things do look nice but it's definitely it's maybe you could say it's more of a grown up sort of design i don't really know it's um i i have to admit that i as far as the aesthetics are concerned i'm a little bit torn with it i'm not sure whether i wanted more or not so I think that's just going to be something you guys are going to have to decide for yourself at home. But I do know that, like, for argument's sake, the uh, Rampage 6 Extreme, the way that lit up with, like, the two-way mirrors and, like, the things hidden in the lights and all in the side underneath, that it kind of made it feel like a more premium product. And that's what's making me wonder with this. It's almost like this is more of, like, um, a, a Zenith hero rather than a Zenith Extreme as far as aesthetics are concerned. I hope you understand what I'm trying to explain about anyway. But the performance is there. Um, it's ROG at the end of the day. It worked, it, it did the overclock absolutely stupendously. You will have seen a CPU Z already, but it's um, 1.35 volts, 4.3 gigahertz. It's the same as the other boards did. VRMs didn't get hot. Performance was all there. It ticked a lot of boxes. And that is why we are going to give it maybe not the performance and stuff. We're gonna give it the OC3 approved award because it is a great board. It does everything that you wanted from it. It just kind of leaves you like, like I said, maybe it should have been the Zenith Hero. And maybe that's why I'm kind of a little bit torn with it. But still a good board. I've got nothing particularly bad to say about it. It's just maybe my expectations were slightly higher of that extreme name than it really delivered.